Everyone can paint miniatures. Yes, even you, my shaky-handed fellowship. No, no, um, stop that comment. Hmm? I'm not lying, I'm not gassing you up. It just takes a bit of directed practice. That's all. Here, let me show you. It's simple, really. I'll be telling you everything you'll need and want to go from painting your very first miniature to having a full collection that even your mom's gonna be proud of. Who knows, maybe she'll even wanna put one on her fridge. Well, it seems pretty self-explanatory, but if you're new here, I'll explain what miniatures are. There are these little plastic or resin or metal toys that you use to play things like tabletop role-playing games or war games. They're somewhere between a collectible, a toy, and a craft, where the models themselves are beautiful to collect, but they often come on sprues, completely unassembled and unpainted. It's very similar to, say, the people who build Gundams. It's just that these are generally smaller and are used specifically for playing games. And the painting and assembling is where this video comes in. Let's start with the absolute basics. First, you'll need a miniature to paint. There's a lot of places that you can get miniatures, but you'll find that they can get very expensive very quickly. Luckily, if you're just wanting to play Dungeons and Dragons, it's really easy to get a cheap WizKids mini that represents your character. You'll usually be able to find them in your local game store. Typically, you get two models for about $6. These are amazing for learning to paint on because most of the time they already come pre-built and primed. And they're not too detailed, so it's easy to get everything done rather quickly. Next, you'll need some miniature paints. You can technically use craft paints, but they are really not good for this application as they'll come out splashy and lumpy because the pigment is often way too large. So I recommend going for miniature paint ranges. Some are a lot more expensive than others, but if you want to start with a very reliable cheap set, go with the Reaper Bones Starter Kit. There'll be a link in the description. It's got three extra miniatures for you to practice on, two brushes, and 11 different paints. I'm not sponsored, it's just a really good deal. But if Reaper does want to sponsor me in the future, you know where to find me. I will gladly shill your products. I mean, I already am, but... The startup cost is $40, and I know that's a lot, but it is way better than trying to get all of these pieces individually. If you didn't go with this paint set, I recommend Army Painter, they're relatively cheap and work solidly for your first miniatures, and you'll need some brushes. You'll want to go with synthetic brushes from your local hobby shop. Oftentimes, they're very cheap and can still last you a very long time. Now of course, Natural hair brushes are often way better, quote unquote, easier to handle, but if you're just learning, Learning brush control on these brushes is going to be infinitely better in the long run so that you don't waste a ton of money ruining your super expensive brushes. You'll want something about this size compared to your finger. Usually that's considered a size two, but sometimes they range. Lastly, once you've got your paint, your mini, and your brush, you'll need a cup of water that you don't mind getting dirty and some paper towels. I use a plastic cup with ridges like this, and this thing has been through the ringer, but it still works incredibly for me after several years. If you go to a hospital or some place with a waiting room of some kind, oftentimes they'll have these next to their water coolers, and if you take some of those, they'll last you a long time, and it's totally worth it. Before we go into how to paint, I'm gonna go over a few things you'll want to add to your collection as soon as possible. Once you have all of the basic materials, you can technically skip past this, but a lot of these are super cheap to start up and get, so I recommend at least watching through it once before getting into painting to see if you can get any of these right now. First thing I recommend picking up is a wet palette. You can, if you want to, get one of the super expensive fancy ones, but realistically they don't work any better than just having one that you make yourself out of Tupperware, parchment paper, and paper towels. I made this one myself. I know, I'm a crafty little bitch. The reason you want one of these is that it helps your paint last significantly longer and you can close them up to keep your paint between sessions if you want to keep that exact color that you've mixed. You just have to add a little bit of extra water to your palette and it will remain fresh every single session for up to a week even. Now to make one of these you'll want some sort of short Tupperware, sort of like a sandwich container. Uh, I personally use the lunch meat uh, containers that you get. If you buy a pack of lunch meat, it'll come in this little plastic container. They are perfect for this. Just make sure to wash it out. 
Now take a paper towel, fold it into about the right size as the bottom, cut out some parchment paper to fit in that square as well, soak them both thoroughly in the sink, and then turn it upside down and pour out the excess water, and then smooth it out. Now you just want to add a little bit of water every session, and you're solid. Next thing you'll want to grab is some sort of handle and poster tack so that you can hold your miniatures easier. Handles can be anything from dowels to pill bottles. Anything that's about the length of your hand and is easy to hold on to. You can technically use foam tape for this. It works pretty well to keep the miniatures on, but unfortunately it's not reusable. It is a consumable technically. So I prefer to use poster tack because you can reuse that essentially forever. You just stick it to the bottom of your miniature and then stick it onto your handle and you're golden to go. Now you can prime your minis with any basic paint that you have, but it's much more effective to use either an airbrush with a primer based paint or a rattle can. An airbrush is super expensive and fancy and mine doesn't even work because I got it secondhand and I'm still trying to fix it to where the point where it can actually work. So I use Rust-Oleum or Krylon primer, gray primer. You can use black or white or brown, but I personally use gray because it's very easy to get up to the lighter colors and get back down to the darker colors without using a bunch of extra layers. Now, if you go with WizKids minis, you won't necessarily need these, but they will still be helpful, is these clippers and a hobby knife. The hobby knife is used to demold it, remove mold lines around the edges using the back of the knife or the front of it, and cutting off extra chunks that may have happened in the molding process. And the clippers are for cutting them off of the sprues. It's super useful and I highly recommend getting yourself a pair if you're going to go into getting a lot more models than just one or two. And they're absolutely necessary if you ever get into kit bashing, which is combining bits and pieces from two different models. Speaking of models that come on sprues, you'll need something to stick them together, usually in the form of either plastic cement or super glue. I personally use super glue because it goes on all different kinds of models, from metal to resin to plastic and plastic cement only works with that type of plastic. So if you're only using like Games Workshop stuff, then you'll want to go with the plastic cement, but I personally have a wide range of sources that I get my minis from, so I use the super glue. I recommend Gorilla Glue because it has the most bang for buck. Uh, it's about the same cost, but it comes with a lot more liquid inside of it, and it's gel, so it uh, helps form better to the creases, leaving less of a gap. Most models come with bases, and while you can just leave them boring and black like this, I highly recommend, and a lot of people also take a lot of pride in making their bases look really nice. I personally use a mixture of different sands and rocks and such that you glue onto the base before priming, but there are tons of different things you can use. You can go out and grab basic sand from wherever you have the nearest sand. You can buy wedding sand from a hobby store, you can buy uh, pebbles for an aquarium, and you can use flock that a lot of companies sell. But whatever you choose, uh, put it on before you prime and then prime your miniature, and then you can paint it afterwards. You can even use things like sticks or rocks or leaves. But I recommend if you take stuff from outside, make sure you bake it at a low temperature for a long time to kill any bacteria and to dry it out. You don't want your models molding. Also make sure that they don't catch fire. You can always paint by the daylight or a candle light if you uh, happen to not have any electricity. But I highly recommend getting yourself a daytime temperature lamp. I use the one that I made myself uh, that I mentioned on my other channel. But anything that has a nice daylight temperature will help you get your most accurate model color. Uh, and it helps maintain even painting across all of your different miniatures. You want to have a nice, even light that helps reduce as many shadows as possible while you're painting on the minis. If you already bought some pre-painted models from eBay, like somebody had already painted them themselves, and you don't necessarily like the paint job, what you can do is you can strip them of the paint using something that is called a degreaser. I highly recommend going with the dollar store variant because it already is a little watered down, you don't have to worry about mixing any ratios or anything like that and it works over time and is super cheap. You just soak it, typically I soak it overnight, but you can leave it in as long as you want. This won't hurt the plastic or the resin or the metal, and it will just eat at the paint. And then you come back with a toothbrush, scrub it very, very gently, and then if the paint doesn't fully come off, dunk it back in there, leave it for a couple more hours, come back, scrape again until almost all of the paint is off. 
Sometimes the plastic will be stained, but as long as you can see all of the details and you've gotten almost all the paint off, you're good to go. You can reprime them and start all over. This takes patience, but it is way better than just throwing out models that you don't want to have to repaint and buying all new ones. This is an amazing money saving thing. I highly recommend it, especially if you're going to buy some of the retro models that are out there. I really want to buy some of them. I really love retro models, but I don't have the money right now. Eventually I'll get into it and you'll see it on the channel when I can't afford them. Anyways. And like I said earlier, if you want to be a real fancy lad and you want to uh, get an airbrush and a compressor and all of that, uh, eventually I'll be getting mine working and I'll give you some tutorials on how to use it uh, and what I use. It's not as finicky as some people say, it's just I think I need to buy a new part for mine. But this tutorial is 100% without an airbrush so you don't have to worry if you don't have one. And don't get one of these things until you know you like painting miniatures. Because if you don't like it and you buy one of these things off the bat, it's basically a waste of money. Also, we'll go over cleaning your brushes later, but something you'll want as an end step to that is a brush detergent. I use this personally, but there are some other ones out there. It works really well, and I'll show you how to use it later, don't worry. That's most of what I can think about as far as painting add-ons. So now that I've overwhelmed you with a shopping list of things, let's go ahead and get into the basics of painting, shall we? Now you've got all of your stuff, but you have to make sure that the mini is ready to paint first. It's a good idea to give your minis a little bit of a wash before you get into painting them because oftentimes, depending on the way that they make them, there's gonna be a little bit of residue. So just good practice to wash them off first. If you've got on sprue minis, now is the time to clip them off, remove all the mold lines, glue them together, all of that. I know, baby, I know. To get them off of the sprue, you're gonna go right up next to the miniature, leave a little bit of space there so you don't deform the miniature, but then snip it off. To demold it, you're going to scrape the back of your hobby knife along the edge of that mold line gently until it's fully gone and it's nice and smooth. Glue them together, glue them onto the base, add your basing material, and then prime them. Hey there everyone, Editing Nora here. I completely forgot to tell you how to do both of those things, so let's go over that really quick. Firstly, to base your miniature, use something like PVA glue or super glue and spread it across the base of your model, avoiding getting it on any feet or any other parts that connect to the base. Second, get whatever material you're gonna be using and dip your model into it, making sure all of whatever material you're using completely covers the glue. Tap off any excess and let it dry. If it feels like not enough, you can always come back and put a second coat. I prefer using PVA for this, as a second coat will soak into the first coat, making it stronger, and it allows for more varied texture. To prime your minis, what you're going to do is you're either going to use a glove or set your mini on something you don't mind getting some paint on, and spray it from one side across to the other in a quick swiping motion. Do not spray directly onto your miniature, as that will add way too much paint and leave globs. Going with light swipes across your miniature will keep all of the details visible while still allowing for plenty of grip for your paint to attach to. Anyways, that's been it for editing Nora. Let's get back to the video. Once the primer is fully dry, you're ready to go. You're ready to start painting. Miniature painting has many ways of going about it, but the core that a lot of people use, especially when starting out, is base coat, wash, highlight. And we'll go through these step by step so that you can get your minis ready for D&D or Wargaming or whatever you're getting into. Base coating is the longest of these steps, but it is basically the only way to get your minis painted. And mastering the brush control that you need to do it properly is very important once you start going into the more complicated steps when you're ready to move on past the basics. What is base coating? It's applying the base layers of paint. Basically making the cloth green, the pouch brown, the pants blue, the hair red. But it's a little bit more complicated than just slapping paint on your mini and calling it a day. Let's talk about color choice. You could choose a plethora of colors and slap them onto your mini willy-nilly, but seeing that from afar, it's not going to look very cohesive. So holding it out about this far, you want it to look cohesive. My method of doing it so that it's not too cluttered is using five colors. Three basic colors, typically I choose ones that work well together, like a red and green, or a uh, blue and orange, and then a neutral color, like a brown or a black, a flesh tone of some kind, uh, that could also be a brown or a tan or anything along those lines, 
and then a metallic color, either silver or gold. I typically keep a white or black paint around so that I can either highlight up or darken down if I need to, but that's all you'll need for one miniature. That will keep it looking pretty cohesive while it's sitting on the table in front of you and your friends. I typically keep the paint pots on hand and only scoop or squirt a little bit onto the wet palette at a time as I need it. Now one second, you're almost to putting your paint on there. Let's start by thinning your paints. Typically what I do is I put a few drops into my wet palette and a drop or two of water, mix it up and drag it out and if it gives you a nice even but translucent uh, streak on your wet palette, that means you're good to go. Typically people consider this the consistency of skim milk, but I've always found that a little bit awkward to work with. Uh, you want it to look a little bit like this. You don't want it too thin that it's beating up, and you don't want it too thick that it is not translucent at all. But to start, you're going to want to do two thin layers. This has become a joke amongst the community. Uh, Duncan uh, has definitely made that a meme. But basically you want to put as many layers as you need to get a nice opaque coating. Now let's get to painting. First I choose the color that's going to be the most inward on the model. For example, for me, my most inward would be my skin, and then there's layers on top of it that would be painted secondarily. Oftentimes on miniatures, it's either the skin or the innermost part of the armor. I paint that first so that I can be as messy as I need to without having to worry. Then I go outwards. I choose the next up layer and the next up layer until the final one is the outermost shell. Most of the time that's the outermost armor or the helmet or something along those lines. Whatever is the most outward part of the model. So you can be sloppier towards the beginning and slowly but surely be less and less sloppy uh, dialing in the correct colors. Make sure to get any excess off of your brush as you're going. You don't want to put big globs onto your mini. You want to keep it as smooth and thin as possible. So that way you are not uh, leaving any textures on the minis that aren't supposed to be there. You don't want them to look painted, you want them to be painted. I recommend when you're doing metallics using either a different cup of water or completely rinsing out your water between using metallic and a basic color because the flakes will get in your other colors and you can see that from a mile away. You accidentally put a couple of flakes in the skin tone. It can kind of ruin the look of a model. So I definitely really maintain keeping two separate water cans for yourself uh, just to be safe. Congratulations! Technically, if you wanted to stop there once you're done painting your model, you're good, you can stop, you can call it done, set it on the table, you're good to go. But if you want to take it up a notch, for really very little effort, we're going to go over washing and highlighting. A wash is... Well, just that, a wash. You wash it over your model to give shading to the innermost parts of your mini. The wash itself will go into the recesses of the model and it will darken those areas specifically. Uh, you can either do a pin wash, which is just going into the creases, or you can do an all over wash and that will darken the whole model down a little bit, which we will then bring up with highlighting. This will take a little bit longer to dry. So while it's drying, why don't you go down to my Patreon, uh, just donate a dollar, uh, it won't take that long, you'll be good to go, you'll see my videos a week early. Everybody wins, and once you're done, it should be dry, and you can come back to painting. Now for the final step, highlighting. It's really, really easy. There are two different ways of highlighting that are considered basic. Edge highlighting and dry brushing. If you have a more organic model, uh, such as like a barbarian or a wolf or something along those lines, uh, something that has a lot of cloth, a lot of texture, a dry brush is going to be excellent. If you've got more of a robotic, sort of like army man or anything with a lot of smooth lines, you're going to want to do edge highlighting. Dry brushing is technically easier, uh, and let's go into that real quick. What you're going to want to get is a flat brush like this, something small. You can also use things like makeup brushes, there's a lot of different brushes you can use, and maybe in future videos I'll go into specifics of what each different type looks like. But as long as you got something like this, you'll be good to go. Dip it in the paint color that's a little bit lighter than your base colors. Typically I use like a bone color uh, over the entire model. It will work just fine, especially if you're only doing tabletop quality stuff. Rub it on the paper towel until almost all of it is off and you barely see it coming off when you scrape it against your hand. And then start going over the model uh, in one direction, typically from top to bottom. The goal is a gentle buildup of pigment uh, on the most raised areas of the piece. You don't want it to be overdone Less exaggerated is better. To edge highlight, you're going to take the size 2 brush, this one right here, 
dip it into your paint color of choice, a little bit lighter than whatever color you're going on, on top of, and just barely going over the edges, uh, the raised corners of your model. This will add a nice like shine highlight, typically that's used for like futuristic armors and stuff like that. Very common on space marines or any sort of like sci-fi setting. It gives it a nice crisp look. And if you mess up, you can always go back and tidy it up with the base color that you had. That's why the wet palette is super good, to go back to those old colors if you need to touch it up. Congrats, you're almost done with your model. Now all you gotta do is paint the base. I would follow the same steps as above. Choose a base color, like a gray or a brown or a tan. Paint over it. Wash over it with like a brown wash or uh, even a black wash if you want more griminess. And then dry brush over it with a, like a tan or a gray and you are good to go. Congratulations, I'm so proud of you. You got your mini done and you can move on to the next one and keep learning and keep improving your brush strokes. That first one, hold on to it. Hold on to the first mini you've ever painted. Keep it around. I still have the first mini miniature that I ever painted when I was in middle school and it lets me know just how far I've come in that whole time. And if that's your first miniature that you painted because of my video, please, for the love of God, send me a picture on Twitter or on Instagram. You can find them on my link tree. Just tag me and show me I want to see them. I love seeing people's creative works. And that is the absolute basics. We'll go over some advanced stuff in future videos, but for now, that's all you need to know. Now also let me address real quick, contrast paint. I haven't used it, I can't say whether or not it's good. I've seen people use it, you can go and test it for yourself, but it is very expensive, way more expensive than regular paints. So that's only if you wanna try it, uh, and this method works really well also. Now that you're done, let's go ahead and close up shop and put everything away. Let's do some brush care and maintenance. You'll want to thoroughly wash out your brush under the sink under warm running water and then run it in the conditioner. Once you've done that, make sure the conditioner is nice and thoroughly throughout the paintbrush. Then re-rinse it out and form it in the crease of your hand like I'm, like I'm showing here. That should help keep the tip nice and perfect. Uh, you want to make sure you try to get as much out of the brush as possible. Also, Brush Care 101, try not to get the paint all the way up into the ferrule. Uh, that is the very tip part of the paintbrush. Getting it up in there can spell death for your paintbrush because it will force the uh, hairs apart and you'll no longer have a solid tip. You can still technically use that brush as a dry brush, but keeping them as pointed as possible, as long as possible, is super useful, especially for getting finer details. I know they're only like $5 brushes, but keeping them as long as possible, you can keep a $5 brush for a full year. And if I can avoid buying new materials, I absolutely will. There are a lot of places that you can get miniatures. There's a ton of companies selling 3D printed stuff, and eventually I'll get into this on this channel. I just don't have the money to start up that yet, and it can be pretty expensive unless you're already in the hobby. But you can always go on eBay and find what are called lots. Uh, look up Warhammer lots, Wargame lots, miniature lots. Eventually some stuff will pop up, and you may get a good deal. Just check what you're buying first, and if it's a good deal, I recommend grabbing it, even if you have to strip the paint. You can also look on Craigslist, and sometimes your local game shop will run sales on miniatures. I am absolutely sure that there are things that I've missed in this video, and if I have, please tell me in the comments. I'd love to hear your feedback, and I'd love to see how your journey is going. But I sincerely hope that you found this video useful, and if you got anything out of it, Please share it with another D&D friend or Wargame friend who has yet to paint their models. Hopefully this will give them boost in the right direction as well. That's all for today's sermon. Thank you so much for coming around. Please be sure to thank my patrons that I currently have, and if you'd like to join them and see my videos a week early, please go to the link in the description. And as always, may the algorithm bless you and keep you, and in the name of the like, subscribe, and holy bell, amen. Watch me swoos right in. She got a little bit before she'd be home. I know, she won't be back. Give her a bit. I know, I know, it's so frustrating. Why can't she just stay home forever? I know. It's so sad. I know. 
She'll be back though. Come up here, get some pets. <laughs>